everybody, we're back with another edition of the Newsish Roundup. I'm Ashley O'Toole. I'm Alex McCadden. And we're here again to tell you the latest and greatest in our own LeGrand. Before we get started, let's say real quick a nice thank you to our sponsors. Thanks again to those sponsors. We've got some stories tonight we're going to cover, including Jamie McLeod Skinner running for U.S. House of Representatives District 2 here in Oregon. We're going to talk about Ken Kennedy, a local personality, calling football games now for our own LeGrand Alive TV. There's the Union County Fair, which you all still need to go to. Mm -hmm. And lastly, a small briefly section covering an important story that we've been following for the last few weeks. That's right. So, should we kick it off with our first story, Alex? Let's go for Let's it. Let's kick it off. We're talking about Jamie McLeod Skinner. You might start hearing that name a little more often now. She did win the Democratic primary for the Democrat seat. The US, oh Lord. U.S. House of Representatives. U.S. House of Representatives. Try saying all that. District 2 here in Oregon, she is going to run against incumbent Republican Greg Walden here this November. Uh, what is she doing in the meantime? She's actually been touring the district, shaking hands, getting to know folks, and uh, we might see her here in LeGrand again, I'm pretty sure. Now, Ms. McLeod Skinner believes that the role of government is to develop infrastructure and get out of the way. She has three main infrastructure pieces she would like to focus on, roads and transportation, health care, and internet and data. What my job would be is just making sure that the needs of rural communities are addressed. So make sure we have the resources in place for making sure health care, folks have access to health care. Um, before the ACA, a lot of our, the, the folks in rural communities who did not have someone with a, a town job did not have access to health care. And so it's making sure we have a system in place that um, provides access to physical and mental health care for everyone that manages costs, which is very important, uh, which provides a quality of care, and which also provides care for the caregiver. And then we look at infrastructure development. We look at programs like um, making sure there's broadband access uh, in, in our rural communities, because that helps to develop our, it helps in uh, economic development. It also, net neutrality is really important, and I know this is a topic right now. I want the folks here in LeGrand to have equal access and be on, on the level playing field with folks in Silicon Valley. Yeah, net neutrality will, will establish that, and that's why that's so important. Um, but also renewable energy, and I know that's, you know, I'm not talking about do a power line through a community that's a conduit that's just, you know, moving someone else's electricity from one place to another, but I'm talking about local uh, on-site, uh, better utilizing our, our natural resources to help um, help our power grid uh, on site, essentially uh, utility. Our transportation system is always important for moving our goods and services, uh, for also getting access to things. So, um, providing that resource, housing is a huge issue throughout our district. And there's public-private partnerships that can be developed. Either the federal government can either be providing incentives, or um, providing some funding to get those things going. Um, uh, stewardship of our of our public lands and natural resources. Again, I think at the federal level there should be established policies and then resources provided so folks on the ground can decide how to accomplish those big picture policies. But but folks who actually know know the, the land. I'm also very much uh, my policy is government needs to know when to help out when to get out of the way. I'm not talking about overstepping or, or government doing everything, but you know government can help out either creating incentives or um, you know, opportunities and programs for folks to step up and, and kind of take the reins of their life. And I, I really think that's when government's at its best. Now, Jamie wants to stay connected to the entire district. She's actually committed to hold a town hall meeting in every county every year. So I've actually made a pledge already that if I'm elected, I will have a town hall in every county every year. Hmm. That's my commitment, because you got to show up listen to what folks are, are excited about, are worried about, and if people don't like your vote on something, you know, be tough enough to, sh to show up and look someone in the eye and, and, and hear them out. Because regardless of political affiliation, we all care about our families, we all care about our communities, and those are the things that, that bring us together. Um, part of what I've been, been seeing across the district and part of what I've been trying to, to talk to people about is this phenomenal tradition we have already of of being good neighbors, being decent to each other, sitting down together around, around the table and figuring out how to overcome challenges and solutions. And when a community comes up with a solution, it's the obligation, I believe, of the representative, if, it, if it's a fair and equitable solution, to support it. So respect local wisdom, you know, show up and listen, um, respect the wisdom on the ground, 
but figure out what resources are needed for a community and work very hard to make sure those, those resources are provided. If you want to learn more about Jamie and her campaign, you can visit her website at www.jamiefororegon.com. And throughout the election season, we here at News Dish Roundup will try to get features on our other District 2 candidates, so stay tuned for more information about them. This story was also brought to you by... Our next story of this edition is our own about our own Ken Kennedy. Now, Ken's been an announcer for the LeGrand High School sports for 18 years now. He's worked as a radio announcer ever since he graduated from EOU here in LeGrand. And actually, he's also worked as a middle school and rec league football coach in Fruitland, Idaho. Well, uh, I started broadcasting on the radio uh, back in the early 90s with KSRB in Ontario. Uh, they had a guy that was doing play-by-play -play that didn't have anybody to do games with him, and I knew a little about football, so I jumped in and did football for a couple years and swore I was going to get out of radio and come up here to Eastern. And the day after I graduated from Eastern, they offered me a job doing Eastern football. And then I kind of fell into LeGrand High School 18 years ago and have been doing it ever since. After I graduated high school, uh, my, my parents moved to, to Fruitland, Idaho, and my youngest brother was playing and they needed an assistant coach uh, at the middle school. So I coached there for a couple years and then uh, went to work at the radio station and we kept running public service announcements. They needed coaches for the rec league football and they were getting pretty desperate. So I drove over and Payette County Recreation said, hey, I'll do it. Ken will be working for LaGranda Live TV to call for the football games while they are streaming. Well, uh, when you start, first started doing LaGrand sports, you know, I, I was kind of interested. I've, I've done a little bit of editing of video, but I've never been on the, the radio side, but not much anyway. Uh, or on the TV side and and so I was kind of intrigued and you've been after me for a couple years to you know come over and do games and this year just the timing was right and uh, I'm really looking forward to this medium versus my old medium because it expands what you the, the the viewer can do you can actually see the action and listen to it at the same time and that's I think a, a great step uh, for a small community like this. Now, Ken suffers from a heart condition in which he uses a machine to keep the bottom portion of his heart pumping. So our hearts go out to him as he goes through this difficult time. Mm -hmm. Now, the full interview, if you'd like to see that full interview of Ken Kennedy, you can find it, of course, on the LaGrand Alive TV Facebook page. This story was also brought to you by... Our next story tonight is about the Union County Fair. The fair is a town. In fact, yesterday was day one there on Wednesday. And if you missed it, I'm sorry. You missed me and my rock and roll cover band bring the fair to its knees as we played some great hits from the 60s and 70s. But there's still more music and entertainment at the fair along with all the other goodness. Tonight, Thursday night, go check out the Bad Penny Pleasure Makers out of New Orleans, Louisiana to entertain you. Tomorrow night, you can catch the Johnny Cash Review. Friday night, if you guys remember the Johnny Cash Show at the Elgin Opera House a few years ago, myself and a bunch of friends put on a good show for everyone, chronicling Johnny Cash's life. Uh, Friday night, we're going to be putting on a good show of just, just the music. We got the whole cast back together, putting on a show for you. Saturday night, our final night at the fair, our very own Depot Street Syncopators are going to bring some good tunes your direction. Very nice. Well, uh, Friday, you also want to miss the uh, Union County Fair Parade that's going to go through the, uh, downtown LeGrand starting at 6 p.m. Uh, beyond that, on Friday, there are going to be uh, showmanship events for FFA, 4-H, uh, both about livestock and a peewee showmanship event. Uh, then on Saturday, you will be able to see the FFA and 4-H awards as well as a junior market auction. All right, that's pretty cool. So those are our main stories today. That last story was brought to you by... All right, let's get into our briefly section. Two quick stories we want to cover. First of all, one of them is about that marijuana initiative, huh, Alex? Yeah, the marijuana uh, petition for a recreational sale that was filed by a couple of local individuals has failed. Uh, according to the Union County Clerk, only about one vote away would have given them the 1,200 signatures required. Uh, unfortunately, beyond the one missing signature, about 47 signatories did not actually live in the city of LeGrand. Uh, because of that, the Union County Clerk decided not to verify the rest of the signatures she was given 
uh, and the petition failed. Uh, it should be back on the ballot in two years, according to the sponsors who are planning on pursuing it then. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and our second story is about our own Union County Sheriff's Department. You may have noticed they participated in that police lip sync challenge that's been circulating the internet. I think they did pretty well for themselves. As of our recording here, over 280,000 views of that video. That is pretty awesome. Uh, featuring our deputies, of course, our Sheriff Boyd Rasmussen, and our District Attorney, Kelsey McDaniel. So we want to say good job to you guys and thanks yeah. for putting the grant on the map just a little bit more and if you haven't seen that video yet uh, it is kind of everywhere by now i know the chamber of commerce facebook page of the grand main street or of course our the uh, grand alive page is it, it's everywhere at this point so check it out if you haven't seen it yet it's set to john Mellencamp, john Mellencamp's uh small town so check it out these brief stories were brought to you by the following sponsors Well, that's it for this week's edition of Newsish Roundup. I do believe this is my final time. I'm helping out, Alex. Yep, I, I'll just pretend I didn't see that. Next week, Mr. Will Bowman is back in this chair.